Hey, I'm Gabrielle Dennis. I play Cass in the Big Door Prize. I'm Chris O'Dowd. I play Dusty in the Big Door Prize. I will say one of my go-tos to get ready in the morning. <laughs> People think I'm 89 years old. One of my go-tos is James Brown on my Pandora because the man is loud, he's energetic, he gets you going, he gets you excited, and he squeals. James Brown managed to squeal in his songs and it's still like, go James! <laughs> so he's like my go-to get ready like uh, playlist. <laughs> oh yeah, he is fun, isn't he? Yeah. Listen to a lot of Solomon Burke. We, 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 we throw it on. I don't want to get too detailed about the ins and outs of everything, but he goes on at certain times in the marriage. Fries. French fries. Oh, yeah. I can eat them in any way, shape, and form. You have them come come at me curly, crinkled, sweet potato, baked, yeah. fried, shoestring, wedges, any kind of potato that you can cook up in some small hand hand version. Like I French fries. I love French fries. Yeah, I could eat potatoes in many forms and um, getting through every one. Mm -hmm. As my life goes on, I suppose it's my potential. If we are going to really... Potato eater. <laughs> of all different varieties. I really want to explore the curly. I really want to explore the wedge. I want to see what's going on French fry rice and why in the world. There's already two that I use, so I need to find the third one, but I already used the blue heart, a blue butterfly, and I would probably say like a, 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 this emoji, whatever this is. Because <laughs> you don't know what your card is, you don't know where you're going, so it's like... Mm. <laughs> Try to get everybody to stop behaving like a crazy person. Be the voice of reason. And when that gets boring, just join in with everybody and go crazy. Oh, not this particular morph machine. Only because it asks for a lot of personal details and my money. Um, this is asking a lot. But I think there is something intriguing and, and exciting about knowing some aspect of like, am I on the right path? Am, am I fulfilling something that makes sense for me personally? Does it make sense? Um, and then I'm a follower for sure. So because everyone else is town to do it, it's like, well, I want to do it too. I want to play. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would probably do, but I wouldn't want anybody to know what was written on the card. And I would just keep feeding that stupid machine money until it gave me a card I liked. <laughs> You know, going through a lot of the stuff that Dusty is going through, that kind of middle age, um, uh, identity questioning kind of stuff. And also, when you get past that point of halfway through your life, you're like, oh, how many new things am I going to pick up? So I'm trying to pick up new things. I'm like learning languages, trying to get trombone lessons. And I do think a lot of that has been flavored by this show happening and everybody suddenly going, oh, you should do this other, you're a magician actually, or whatever. And I would say for me, um, because this, this show makes the viewer ask the question, you know, certain questions, and specifically Cass is asked, is she happy? Um, so you have to kind of ask yourself these things as an actor and kind of do the work, do the process. So for me, it's just really trying to step out of my shell. I'm a major germaphobe and the, the pandemic did not bode well for me. So I'm like locked up and like, I don't want to see anyone. Don't talk to me. Don't look at me. Do you have hand sanitizer? Uh, so I'm um, just trying to explore more, get out of my shell and my comfort zone and just enjoy the life that I have while I have it because it is not promised tomorrow and it is very short. We think, you know, life goes on and on, but it doesn't. Like one day you realize, oh, there's this thing called morbidity, and like, I should probably just enjoy what I have when I can. Oh, with one character from the show? I probably have to choose the husband. <laughs> she didn't say I'm... it with as great gusto as I pointed oh. at her. No, I'm I don't saying... know whether you noticed that. Oh, I didn't know you pointed at me. <laughs> from the Yes, <laughs> yes, I would feel like that is your mate. That is a person that she's shared her most closest, darkest secrets, you know, and um, she's very comfortable with him. Um, also, she needs to get laid while she's on said island, so why not go with the good stuff that she already knows? <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I always think I would want to be invisible mm. or to fly. Because I think I've had dreams of both of those at some stage in my life where I just float away. The flying thing does nothing for me. I've got a fear of heights. But then you got free travel. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Who needs sky miles? <laughs> I hate traveling now. Yeah, but you can just go by yourself. <laughs> I would go in invisibility, I think or um, speed, mm. like the flash, or the ant, I'd be the ant man. Mm. Tiny little yolk flying <laughs> in and out of your ear. <laughs> Go on, hello. <laughs> it's 
steak. Yes. Steak. We both just had steak. Yeah. We had steak and frites for lunch and a glass of red wine for yeah, me. Yeah, a little Guinness because the day that's in it. I normally wouldn't. Anyway. I normally wouldn't drink on the job, but I said yes. <laughs> You know what? The, uh, I, I was I was doing a live show last year, and I had forgot I hadn't done it in a while. And you forget that power that you have in front of an audience when you're just not doing anything. And I maybe it's maybe it's an ego trip more than power, but it's like suddenly everybody, literally a thousand people, nobody's going to do another thing until you speak next. <laughs> Jesus, the pauses you could take <laughs> and have, but that feels powerful. Having an audience waiting for your next word is uh, very powerful to me. Yeah, I can, I can relate to that, having done stand-up comedy in my past. But I would say as far as feeling the most powerful, it's weird because it's also the same time I probably feel the most vulnerable, which is alone, in prayer mode, and just feeling like there's that power and that connection to ask for and to be thankful and grateful for the things that have been given to me. Um, that to me, there's a power in gratitude and I think for me that's one of the the most important things to me is just be grateful for where I am because I know it can be different um, so there's a power and a strength in knowing where you are why you're there and uh, being appreciative of it and not taking that for granted in any kind of way <laughs>